Hi, this is Daria Shabbat with CorporateProfile.com. We are standing here directly in front of the New York Stock Exchange. And speaking of the New York Stock Exchange, the greatest trade ever. Do you remember that trade by John Paulson that made him a billionaire overnight? But was it really the greatest trade ever? Here today with us, Mike Norman, Chief Economist of John Thomas Financial. Hi, Mike. How are you? I'm great, Daria. Nice to be here. Good to have you again. Mike, tell us, was it the greatest trade ever or was it not? Well, you know, there, that's a very good question. First of all, nobody ever heard of John Paulson before that trade. And of course, we're talking about the trade where he shorted the subprime mortgage market and ended up making something like $20 billion. It was an enormous mm -hmm. profit. But prior to that, for years, I think 20, 30 years, John Paulson was a very uh, much an unknown uh, hedge fund manager, maybe managing about $100 million, which is quite small by any hedge fund standards. And then he had this brilliant idea, really a genius idea. Uh, he decided to short the uh, subprime market because he saw that real estate, like many people has saw, that real estate was getting highly speculative. But here's what he did that was very unique. He went to Goldman Sachs and he said to Goldman Sachs, can you create an instrument that is just filled up with the worst subprime debt that you could possibly find? Literally, uh, an, ex uh, an instrument designed to blow up, an exploding box of cigars, if you will. And Goldman uh, said, of course we can do that for you. So they created a security that had within it all these really terrible subprime loans that were bound to go bad even in a good economy. And then what Goldman did was Goldman, because you needed a counterparty, in order for them to have that, you needed another side to the trade. So Goldman went to some of its clients that happened to be very unsophisticated foreign banks, some German Landes banks and things of that nature. And Goldman said to these institutions, this is a great instrument. This is very diversified. This is a low risk security. It gives you a high rate of interest. So of course, these uh, banks and these institutions, they bought it, but Goldman knew full well that the instrument was designed to blow up. How do we know this? Because in the end, Goldman was accused of fraud and they admitted, yes, we committed a fraud in the marketing of his, this instrument. It allowed Paulson to make his huge bet, but it was a totally rigged bet. It was designed to blow up and it did blow up. And of course, that was the greatest trade. I think when you know how it actually came about, you could see that it wasn't great at all. It was something that was totally skewed in the favor of John Paulson. The foreign banks that invested in it, uh, they lost tons of money. And what we have in the aftermath, you know, was the question was, is John Paulson really a great hedge fund manager? Does he understand the markets? And his performance since that rigged bet has been horrendous. He's lost something like 50 or 60 percent of his client's money. He's done everything wrong. He bought gold at the top. He was shorting U.S. Treasury bonds when Treasuries were rising and continue to rise. His outlook on just about everything. He had some foreign stocks that went bankrupt, some Chinese stocks. So he's been a disaster and very rapidly he's uh, kind of uh, going back to where he was prior to that so-called great trade. Okay, but to his credit, wasn't he like one of the only hedge fund managers who saw it coming? He was like the only one and people were telling him he was crazy well, to, to say that the the housing market is going to explode. Well, implode. Know, he saw it coming, but many people saw it coming. I think if you're going to if you're going to give any credit to Paulson, if you're going to, you know, talk about his genius, it, it was the genius of thinking, "Hey, Maybe I could find some firm, some Wall Street investment bank that can create an instrument for me because there wasn't an exchange or a security or a, a vehicle that existed at the time that allowed one to make this kind of bet. And there were other people um, who saw the, the, the potential in shorting the subprime market. Uh, several of them also sort of went the route of John Paulson and went to investment banks and had these instruments sort of tailor created. But I don't think anyone had it to the degree that Paulson uh, really had Goldman build it that it was going to blow up no matter what. And the thing is, like, the public sees this, and right now, you know, with the market being very difficult and people so skeptical about the market, but then saying, hey, 
Why should we get involved? The whole game is rigged. It's rigged against us. We don't have this sort of inside information or the ability to sort of concoct a trade a hundred percent in our favor. And it's led to a very negative perception on the part of the public towards Wall Street. And I think that's really a bad thing because you need the public's involvement. If you have legitimate businesses and entrepreneurs who are looking to raise capital, what is the stock market? The stock market is the way that you know we sort of uh, spread risk. So companies are able to raise money and they're able to put that to use with new ideas and innovation. And when the public pulls out, you just don't have that environment anymore. And that's very damaging long term. Mike, where did the regulatory authorities look when all this happened? Well, they were obviously looking elsewhere because then that, that was the big, you know, outcry about this where the, the cop was not on the beat when all this was going on. And not only that, since all of this basically fraud has been discovered, nobody has gone to jail. Some fines were paid. In, the, in this instance, Goldman, who admitted to fraud, it was a, it was a civil fraud case. It wasn't criminal. They paid a penalty, which for Goldman was very small. But in, at the end of the day, really, nobody went to jail. And uh, the question of where were the regulators, where were the cops, they just weren't there. Thank you for talking to us, Mike. Pleasure as always. I'm Daria Shabab with CorporateProfile.com, reporting directly from Wall Street. I just spoke to Mike Norman, Chief Economist of John Thomas Financial. Tune in again for more interesting interviews and hot financial news.